Okay, I think we're ready to calculate our um, gear ratios inside our planetary gear setup. Um, so we had already looked at um, the at this. We would calculated some of the sizes. Um, let's go through those just so we remember what they are. Um, we had um, gone into equation 1311. So this is in chapter 13. And we set the pressure angle on our gears to be 20 degrees. Um, we set the number of teeth on the sun, so the center gear, at 30 teeth. Um, K is 1 because we were using full size teeth versus stub teeth. If you had stub teeth, the little short teeth on the gear, then it would be 0.8. Um, this is just defining the gear ratio between the gear and the pinion. This is equation, um, well, this is equation 1311. This is it uh, with plugged in, instead of M, we plugged in G over P, so the gear ratio, um, because we don't actually know the number of teeth on the pinion yet. Um, this is it solved for the minimum number of teeth that the pinion can have to avoid undercutting. So for us, it actually came out to be a fraction. You can't have fractional teeth, so we rounded up to the next gear tooth integer number. So we rounded up to 15. Uh, this is just confirming the gear ratio. So the, uh, uh, the sun to the planet, um, or the gear to the pinion of 50, uh, 30 to 15, which is two. We set a diametral pitch. Now this is kind of a low diametral pitch number. Well, usually they're a little higher than this, but we set it just so our gears weren't too super large. Um, so six teeth per inch. Um, and then here we calculated the various diameters of the sun, the planet, and the ring. And so we had done that in the previous video. So that's where we left off at. And now what we want to know is we want to go in and we want to calculate um, if you turn the sun at 100 RPMs. So 100 RPMs is just a number we picked. If you turn it at 100 RPMs, then how fast are, if you had the carrier on here, so if I had the carrier, um, which maybe we can get it on there, it's kind of, there it goes. Um, if we had the carrier on there, then how fast would it be spinning? You know, because if if I look, let's let's see. There's there's the mark. If I go around once on the sun, the planets have only moved you know a few degrees. So it's not one to one. There's some other gear ratio that we want to calculate. Um, so what we've done is we've gone in. I've started drawing some of it. Um, actually, I wrote the wrong number there, so we need to fix that. Um, we'll fix that shortly. Um, and so this red represents the plant, uh, the sun. The green represents a single planet. And this, well, this bar, that's going to be the carrier. So in our in our model here, it's this little you know triangular shaped piece. Um, here we're just looking at as if there's just a single sun and one planet, um, but. The one we printed out there's other planets on here but they would all be connected together and moving at the same rate um, and so we're just going to say that the sun has a speed of 100 rpm and we just know that we're given that or we know it or we want that maybe um, and we want to know you know how fast is this carrier moving um, let's call it bar I don't want, I'm trying to not write a super long subscript there. So the omega of the bar, we want to know how fast this bar is spinning around. So it's, you know, it's doing something like this. We want to know how fast it's doing that. Um, and um, we're going to use, your book does go through, well, let's finish out before I talk about that. Let's finish out writing these numbers down. So in MathCAD, the um, sun had a diameter of 5 inches. So this is 2.5 inches. And the planet's had a diameter of two and a half inches. So this would be 1.25, one uh, 1 uh, 1 1.25. And so that would give us our dimensions that we'll need in a second. Let's label some points. Um, let's make this point A. Um, the contact point between the two gears as point B. And um, the center of the planet, let's make that C. And let's just make this point over here, D. Now I have uh, misplaced, there's my notes. All right. Um, we're going to use an idea called uh, the instantaneous center of zero velocity. 
So uh, your book goes through a different process. Your book uh, has some equations that relate the number of teeth and the, the size of the gears and all that. Um, and that's totally fine. There, I mean, it's one way to do it. Um, it, it takes a lot of um, concentration, I guess, to make sure that you get all the right uh, numbers of teeth on the right gear, pinion, you know, where do they actually go? So there's a lot of potential to make errors in there. So um, um, I'm gonna show you a different way to do it um, in case you wanna do it this way. Um, either way, we'll give you the same answer in the end. So like I was saying, we're gonna use something called instantaneous center of zero velocity. All right, so we're gonna draw our you know generic bean shape item from dynamics. Um, and we're going to say that there are two points on this that we know the instantaneous, instantaneous, so a snapshot in time. Um, and this point is moving that way. This point moving this way. And we have frozen this thing in time, and those are the vectors that we are aware of. Um, if you know those, then you can draw perpend. So this is perpendicular, perpendicular lines. And where those lines cross, that is the instantaneous center of zero velocity. So basically, it's the point about which our little beam is rotating. And it's zero velocity, so it's not actually moving. This thing is spinning around yet with these vectors on it. Um, we can use that idea, but in reverse. So if we know this point, then we can back out these velocities. That's what we're going to do. Because we know this point... You know, that's the center of the uh, sun gear. It's not moving. It's not translating. It may be spinning. We're not talking about spinning, um, but it's not translating anywhere. And actually, we know this point also. Um, remember the ring gear. This is the ring gear over here. I've just drawn it as a straight line, but it's a curve. Um, it is stationary, and that's common that the ring gear is often held stationary, and then everything spins inside of it. That's pretty much normal. It's not always, you can have, you know, the ring gear spinning. Um, but a lot of times the ring gear is stationary. In, an, in ours, it is stationary. Um, and so that means that um, point D right here in this instant in time is also zero velocity. So those two points, A and D, have zero velocity. Um, the bar, you know, it has some velocity because it's swinging around this way. Um, the uh, there's some surface velocity on these teeth because the red gear is spinning and the uh, green gear is spinning. Um, and so they, there's some velocity on those teeth. Uh, we don't know that. Um, and we don't know the bar. I think I already said the bar. We don't know that one. All right. Um, so what we're going to use is this idea that we do know these and we do know the 100 RPM. So we, if we don't know any of it, then yes, we would be out of luck. But we do know that we're inputting 100 RPMs on the sun. So we know if I could spin that at 100 RPMs, we know that much. Um, all right, so what we wanna do is we wanna go in and say that um, the velocity at C, so this is the, the you know end of the bar. It's moving with some velocity C. Let's make sure we have enough room for everything. All right, um, we know that that velocity would equal, well, you know, back to this idea over here, VC would equal the omega of the bar, so this guy, times more or less this distance right here. So that's kind of the same idea that we've, we've got a center here, we know how fast stuff is spinning around it, and there's a velocity vector out here, that's kind of like this. There's a center, velocity vector, and uh, a distance between the two. So that's all we're writing here. Now, we don't know all these numbers, but we're going we're gonna to start. So the, we do know the distance between them, 2.5 plus 1.25. So let's get our calculator out. I guess I should just add that in my head, but uh, we're going to do it this way. 3.75. Clips in the way. 
All right, so we know that. We can't solve for it, but we know that. So that's step one. Um, step two, we also know that there is a velocity here. We call it velocity at B. So it's B is not on the bar. B, B is uh, the contact point between the red gear and the green gear, the sun and the planet. Um, we know that by similar triangles. Now I should have maybe drawn it a little longer to make our triangles work out better. Let's draw it really long arrowhead. Um, because I've got this relationship. We just wrote an expression for the velocity at C. Um, and I know that there's zero velocity here. And I could create a, you know, a velocity profile. Um, well, a linear velocity profile here. Um, I could say that this is a linear relationship and I end up with similar triangles. This triangle, um, CD, whatever this is, and or DC that, uh, and then DB with this point. Um, those are similar triangles. And so if I know the velocity uh, here, then I can calculate this one just by the ratio of these two triangles. So velocity B, so the point here, would equal velocity at C times um, this distance, which is down here, uh, 1.25 plus 1.25, so 2.5 over, so that's this distance, over BC, so which is just this one, 1.25. So it's just the similar triangles. I'm just trying to scale VC to equal whatever VB would equal. Um, and so I, I don't know these, I can sub in this expression here if I want to. I'll do that in a minute though. Let's write another one because we still don't know any of this stuff other than the dimensions. I guess I could uh, rewrite that as VC times two, right? Because 2.5 over 1.25. Um, now let's, let's do a d omega A. Uh, well, this is gonna be omega A. It is the, um, I'm calling basically the um, sun gear A and omega A is the speed of the sun gear. So omega A is equal to, um, here's that VB again. I can, remember this is a zero velocity, so I can do a linear shape between here. It's gonna get started to get crowded, I guess, on my little diagram. Um, and I have an expression for VB, um, so I can write another one here VB over this distance, which is the radius of the sun gear, 2.5 inches. Now, I do know omega A. Um, I'm gonna need probably some new room to write. Um, let's, let's start subbing all of these things in. Um, I have omega A is 100 RPMs. Let's see if we can, there we go. And then VB is actually VC times two over 2.5 inches. Um, VC is actually omega bar times 3.75. So let's, instead of VC, let's put in uh, omega bar, the speed of the bar times 3.75. Um, and then times two over 2.5. So all I did here is I just went in and er, subbed all of the equations, you know, put VB in here, put VC in here, subbed them all together. And now I have an expression that 100 RPMs, that was the original input speed, equals the speed of the bar times all these numbers. So, um, and the inches cancel out. So let's see what we end up with. Um, 3.75 times 2 divided by 2.5, 3. So all of this is 3. So the, my expression then is 100 RPM. That's the oh, RPM. That's the speed of the um, sun equals 3 times the speed of the bar. So the speed of the bar is equal to 33.3 .3 RPM. 
And uh, that's, uh, to me, a simpler way, even though um, I need my notes to do it, uh, it's a simpler way than trying to keep track of the um, number of teeth on a pinion versus a gear. What is the pinion? What is the gear? Um, what do you do with the ring? All that kind of stuff. Your book does go through that, and I, I encourage you to read that to see if that way makes more sense to you. And it does um, create a single expression, um, 1332. It creates the equation 1332 that, um, assuming you know what to put in all the spots, it will give you the gear ratios that you want to use. And they use um, uh, this same setup where there's a single planet and a sun and a ring gear um, and work through an example using their process on page 697. So that is another way to do it and compare the two to see, um, now it's different numbers, um, but uh, compare the two to see if which way you like working better. Um, okay, so that should finish up our introduction to gears. This is part two. Um, if you missed part one, then go watch that first or else this one will, it might make sense, but you just kind of be jumping in in the middle. Um, all right, and we will uh, talk about AGMA process next um, on Friday, I think it will be. Um, and that's a process where we can go in and, and design the size of the teeth, um, their thickness, you know, what uh, so to, to guard against contact stress, so the, the gear teeth touching one another, and to guard against bending stress so that um, you don't snap a tooth off. Uh, you have to have them a certain size. Remember we talked about that undercutting. This whole process that we just did, well, in part one of this video, was trying to eliminate the undercutting, but you still have the possibility of snapping a tooth off even without the undercutting of the gear teeth itself. Um, because you just might apply too much torque, uh, too much tangential force to that and snap it off of there. So AGMA process will be on Friday and we'll go through how to guard against those two failures, bearing stress or contact stress and um, bending stress in the gear tooth. Okay, we will see you on Friday.